You rewind it almost on a daily basis. I mean, you couldn't write that script, really, could you? To have Gillingham and then to have this is amazing. But the 93rd minute, you know, it's just unreal. So the days and the, and the weeks leading up to it, it was like, yeah, we can do this, we can do this. My name's Sharon Latham. I'm, or I was, Manchester City's club photographer. Um, I worked for Manchester City for eight years. And as a team, as players together, they were so gelled, they knew each other so well, and they knew how each other played and what each other had to do, and it was like a, a complete unit. It was, it was really good. It was really cool to watch from inside as well. The final week leading up to that game was all about the end of season DVD. By that point, uh, we had assumed we were going to win the title. It was just an absolute gimme. My name is Michael Russell. I've been at Manchester City for eight years and uh, at the time of that goal, uh, I was the senior producer for City TV. I promised that in that week leading up to, the, to that game, None of us talks about what if. We had to practice the, uh, the trophy lift presentation the day before with the Premier League. My name's Oliver Hamer. Um, I'm the match day events producer at City. Started to think about how we could help the fans make a, a more memorable moment than it was going to be. All we could do as staff, um, you know, throughout the whole club, is just do our jobs. You know, the players have a job to do, and ultimately they need to be left alone to do that. So as long as we do our jobs behind the scenes and all come together to make the match day happen, then that's what it's about. I'm Lee Jackson, I'm head groundsman of the Etihad Stadium, and I've been with the club for almost 26 years. And to be fair, you don't really want to upset the routine. I really clearly remember on the Wednesday before the Saturday breaking one of my cameras, and I thought, oh gosh, this is an omen. I'm, I'm really, really, really superstitious, I'm really still there, and I thought, oh god, this is an omen. So I had to hire a camera for the game. But do you know what? This is honestly, I honestly, honestly never feared that we were not going to do it. It was a normal day in the sense that we, the team, we were going to be at the game doing something with, with our sponsors, our partners. I'm Steve Antrobus. Um, I was client services manager in the partnerships department. For this particular game, I had a particular job which um, I wasn't expecting to do and, and was also top secret. The top secret element was the fact that um, one of the partners I was managing was, was Umbro and we had decided that if the team won, that on, for the trophy presentation itself they would wear commemorative shirts. Every player really needed different, uh, different things so it was a matter of making sure that you remembered all the requirements, putting them out for each individual, all the staff stuff. Les Chapman, kit manager at the time and being at Manchester City since 19... 92. Waiting for the players to come and then the uh, mayhem starts. This, Manchester City are 90 minutes away from winning the Premier League for the first time. From eight points behind their local rivals to within touching distance of getting their hands on English football's most coveted trophy. And we decided to turn our cameras away from the pitch that day and focus on those fans. City winning 1-0, everything's going well, everything is going to plan. Uh, Zaba scores the goal. I think I stuffed up the music because uh, Zaba scored and I wanted to play a song for Zaba. And um, I think I, wa I wanted to play the conga, so it's do, do, do Pablo Zaba later. And I think from memory I played, I could do. All I remember is afterwards, one of my colleagues turning me and going, what was that? I was like, it's for Zaba later. And, uh, and he was like, you're an idiot. I was like, all right, well. So I thought it was good. At half time, uh, I've never felt so comfortable. And the fans were brilliant. I just so clearly remember the fans on that day. So at 1 0 up, I thought we were cruising really. Um, we had the majority of possession. We didn't look in any danger. And then in the second half, it was a complete transformation. Fine, they've got, they've got a goal, but there's 40 minutes to go. Back in my mind, thinking, I can't believe, I cannot believe this is happening and all the planning and all the prep and everything is, is going to waste but more I just thought I can't believe this is going to happen to, to our fans I just thought this is this is too hard to take. When Jamie Mackey scored the second goal 
I have never felt more of a City fan in my life. I was so brutally depressed. Well, I remember talking to, uh, let's just say, a non-City supporting member of staff um, when it was 1-1 and I actually wasn't watching the game at the time and I just heard this muffled cheering at the time and I thought, that's 2-1 to QPR. And I, thought, and I actually, actually said to the girl who speak to her, I said, that's it now. And she said, no, you'll do it. I thought, no, not a chance. So I couldn't see the game, so I didn't even really know what, how many minutes were left, how much extra time there'd be or additional time had been given. The guy from Umbro that was with me was, well, what do we do? I said, well, we'll just stand here because you never know. I started looking at the fans because I'd been listening and being carried by the fans as well. So I kept turning around and, and taking a few, there's a few shots that I've got of fans. Um, and when that second goal went in, it was like a lot of them were like completely despaired. The, the thing that concerned me was the day before, uh, we'd had the run through of the, the trophy ceremony on the pitch on the Saturday afternoon. So I'd seen all the, um, all the stage and the, the plinth and everything on the pitch and I thought, I hope this isn't the only time I see it, you know, because you, you dread seeing it on the Saturday in the rehearsal and not seeing it um, after the game. Selfishly, at that point when that goal goes in, I thought, what a waste of our time. We had worked so hard in the week leading up. I think you have hope and I think you kind of like felt like we just things were Maybe it was our time. I'm Karen Proctor and I was Senior Match Day and Events Manager. You felt like everyone in the club um, and the fans were sort of really willing it along. Um, but yeah, I mean, football's so crazy, you just, you can never guarantee anything. I was watching Mancini and Mancini, not a mega expressive manager on the touchline, in every game that I used to photograph and, and you'd watch him, he'd be a little bit expressive. But I was watching him through all of this and I thought, I'm gonna stop following the game now and I'm just gonna see what happens here. When it, when it went to 90, that was that was it. And I, 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 I think I'd given up hope. Yeah, the, the fourth official put his board up and uh, I normally cue the, annou the announcer, so I'm like, okay, four minutes or whatever it was. And I said, right, okay, go. So that's the normal process and usually wait till the ball's in a safe part of the field, so not when City are attacking. And um, he always tells me that I just said, go on, announce it. And, he, and I think it was, I think City had the ball in a decent position. And, um, <laughs> and I just said, go on, announce it, as in like, we've got no chance. But uh, he waited until the right moment. So I, I know that I'd, I think I'd given up. At that point, I was like, well, there's no way. Realistically, this club has had a turnaround before. Gillingham doesn't happen a second time. It happens once in a generation. That result happens once in a generation. And they had seen it happen before. And whilst they deserved it, arguably more than many other football fans, I just didn't expect it to happen. Um, so yeah, at 90 minutes, no chance, it was over. People were streaming out of the stadium completely understandably, I'd have, I'd have gone, I'd have, I'd have gone. And um, when Jekyll's goal goes in, you could see a few people stop in their tracks because the, the cheer went up, but it was still too late. The goal was still far too late. When Jekyll scored, I think that the whole stadium changed. And for me, that was it then. It was like, right, Jekyll scored. We, we, we can do this because one goal now, we win the league. So I think at that point, there was a massive change in the stadium. Two goals is difficult to get. You know, one goal, one chance is completely different. I'll never forget him grabbing the ball out of the net and just literally running. And everybody just running back. And the speed that they ran back as well. There's still hope. Together has been the club's motto. Can they produce it right at the end? When the ball broke to Aguero and he went past whoever it was, he went past and he had a, he had a chance, he had a chance. That, I remember that and I remember just, I remember thinking, oh my God, just hit it, hit it. I seen the ball go forward and I'm thinking, is this going to happen? Aguero, if anyone can, it's him. Back to Balotelli, he runs for Aguero! And you see the ball at the net, there's almost a pause, not amongst the fans. Nobody, let's be honest, nobody in their right mind would have thought that what happened was going to happen with the Sergio goal. But I remember the Sergio goal going in, and in my head I thought, it's gone in, 
And then I looked again and I thought, did it go in? And then I literally saw him running round. And as he was running round past Ed, my freelancer, I thought, yes. Because he went straight past him with the shirt over his, as he took his shirt off. And I thought, oh my God. Looking down the tunnel, I know as the as obviously the goal went in, there was Simon and Sam from our comms team just jumping up and down and screaming. Um, and then people appeared from nowhere, out of, out of corridors, out of out of doors, and just rushed past up the tunnel. I mean, you couldn't write that script really, could you? It was just a, it was a complete and total one-off. Um, for me, the most incredible, probably three minutes that I've experienced since I've been at City, since 92. The next thing I remember is being on the ground in the control room, so like all of us, basically like five grown men, are just ro rolling around on the, control, on the floor, just going absolutely berserk. And I remember shouting to the graphics guy, goal graphic, goal graphic, and he normally is dead calm and composed, and he's a big City fan, but he was on his knees, and he was just hitting the keyboard, just trying to find the goal graphic and that's a vivid memory is just his hand going like this trying to just trying to find goal graphic. There were young fans climbing up the turrets outside of the Colin Bell stand and I screamed into my radio uh, for a cameraman called Matt to get outside the stadium because no one had this shot. It was no one could have had this shot. No one would have envisaged the fact that fans had left early but then were climbing the turrets to get back in. And I demanded, I, said, I, I remember saying, you need to get outside, you need to get outside now to the Colin Bell stand. No matter where you are, this is where the story's happening. It was, a, it was a, a group of young fans who were so desperate to see history. They had missed it because they had missed the goal, but they still knew the history was to be made. It's weird because you can't really relax and enjoy it. Like it just, you try and go, you're trying to kind of liaise with the guys upstairs in the PA room, like, okay, are we ready for this? Are we, you know, do we know what we're doing? Because you've got to kind of get it back on track a little bit. I cried. Oh. <laughs> and it's bizarre because, you, as you say, as a fan, you want to go, ah, and run around because you saw, and as again, you saw all the fans, and you saw the reaction, and you saw the emotion, and you saw the bench, and you saw, and you just wanted to get involved. But I knew that what I was doing was part of history. Photographers had a, like a pen on the pitch after the game to stand in and it was actually part of our job with a uh, small golf buggy we had to drive all the barriers onto the pitch and um, obviously with the subsequent pitch invasion we sort of got a bit lost with that and I actually clean forgot. I was allowed to go in the dressing room which was an absolute massive honour and again because these are my work colleagues but friends as well, the players, so you wanted to join in but I couldn't, I had to be a fly on the wall and the fly on the wall, it was just manic, it was just incredible. Chappie was making sure they all had tops on and then I was asked to make sure that everyone had their shirt on the right way around and he didn't cover it. Probably half a team had it on back to front. Um, Edin had a Bosnian flag wrapped round him well, do I try and tell these guys who just achieved what they have, I'm sorry, you've got your shirt on the wrong way round, or do we let it go? Um, and I uh, wonder, oh, it's not an executive decision. It was just, it, just carry on. Once they finally came out, and obviously, like, hugely excited. They didn't have to be in an exact order, but a rough order. Um, and they were just going mental. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And obviously, um, I'm quite short, so I'm like five foot two, and they were all like pretty big, very excited um, guys. And I just couldn't get them to do anything that I wanted to do, which uh, in any other circumstances, I'd probably be quite annoyed about, but I could kind of let it go. Ultimately, in the back of my head, I kept thinking, like, not only does this need to, need to go well for the team, but this news looks right for the fans. To create the best content possible, you have to enjoy it and you have to live it. You don't have to be a City fan to do it. But, my God, that day, every one of us, for that brief moment, were blue. And I hold my hands up and say I'm not one, but for that moment, it wasn't me being a blue, it was being a football fan. I, I was witnessing the ultimate football moment the ultimate football moment. It's very difficult to describe. It's just one of those fantastic moments in life that I was there and had a, had a part to play 
I'm, I'm really proud. We were in the dressing room, we were in the stands, we were on the pitch, we were in the tunnel. Uh, we were everywhere our fans couldn't be. Well, the, on the pitch they could be and they got there, but we knew our job was to give fans an insight that they couldn't already get and really and truly that the broadcast cameras couldn't get. They do an unbelievable job on broadcast, unbelievable. But what we can do is take people somewhere that they can't and we were prepared for it and we had all of the plans in place, but we just didn't appreciate that the story was going to be this dramatic. I think it was big and, and everyone remembers it, everyone, globally. You say, where were you when you grow up? Everyone remembers, it's one of those things, it's, you know, everyone knows where they were. I still get upset, a little bit, it's all right. Just great. Cameron, why do you make me cry? I do, I've left now, but it's fab. Sorry. I think the impact of this goal is symbolic. Is the moment where Manchester City says to the world, we are contenders. My name is Ferran Soriano. I'm the CEO at the City Football Group and at Manchester City. This moment is one of the biggest moments in the history of football. This is a legacy. You know, a hundred years from now, somebody will be looking at the, maybe the hundred biggest moments in the history of football, and this moment will be in. So the moment, the way it happened, it puts Manchester City in the history of football. And that will be forever. The story of Aguero's goal was told throughout the world. And as a result, if you wanted to come and hear that story, see that story, and experience that story, you had to come as it was then to mcfc.co.uk and to our YouTube channel. And we made sure that that story was being told. And uh, I think that day set the bar for how we celebrate big moments as a production team and how we bring fans behind the curtain. It's really, really difficult to understand how and why it happened other than the fact of sheer hard work and the fact that everybody pulled together, like you say, whether it was a player, a chef, somebody who worked in the boxes, because all those people are relevant. Everybody's relevant, so, yeah, amazing. And I'm a wimp. All right. <clears throat> Easy. Hopefully. Oh, okay. Okay. Good? Yeah, it's good. We're done. Woohoo! Are we done, Zeus? We're done, Zeus. <laughs>